welcome back the playhouse featuring none other than big ted what an amazing conversation first of all as guys i've just come from lunch in you see guy, battles popping sure, out how to make sure let me cool buffet so ted and like other guests doesn't want to cool out here he eats in a unique and special way <laughs> bites at a time of a couple of hours <laughs> so we went and had some amazing buffet yeah um with his beautiful wife yes with nick who's also here yes new on set so a big thank you to Sarova. How do you find the meal? Blessings. I think we love it. We love the new look and the food. Um, I told me we could dessert. Yeah, yeah and we a dessert. <laughs> in case you see somebody biting. Yeah, yeah. So a big thank you to Sarova. By the way, in case you don't know, at that same place where we had buffet, every Sunday, there's an amazing brunch that is had from 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. We got to experience it. Ooh, unlimited food, unlimited bubbly sushi. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Indian, diverse. In fact, check this out. Yeah. So anyway, welcome back. Ted, what you doing in the store? Where, 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 where did you stop? First of all, even before we get to where we stopped, there are yeah. some things you asked me to remind you. Yeah. Uh, if I don't ask you, it's how. Shafiwero. Shafiwero. So um, um, we're having a concert at, uh, at uh, Huru Park. And I'm the MC. And I received this call. Life-changing call. And they say that, you know what? Isa is dead. And I just come to the concert and I just go like, guys, everybody just go home. You know, Nameless is in a um, condition. We don't know what's up. They've had an accident and they were coming for the show. So there'll be no show. So the weeks that preceded... It was your gig that they were coming for. Yes. And they just come from Dimples in Akuru. Yes. So um, we are at... Um, so what had happened before, and this is a story which has never been told, is that um, Issa's mom had called me way before. Issa took me to his mom. When did you first meet Issa? Let's well, start there. You see, most of these artists, I met them, I met him like, what, two, two years before, three years before that. And he had taken me to his mom, introduced me to his mom at home, that, hey, this will be the big, my big brother, the one who will take care of me. So the mom gave me instructions. Same, same thing happened to Prezo. The mom gave me instructions. Take care of my son to Red Sun. The dad gave me instructions before he passed away. Told me to take care of my son. Make sure that um, he's okay. So um, we are planning this whole funeral. So, so you even be, hey, you, you've, you've mentioned a Kenyan icon. You can't skip over this one. Mm -hmm. That's in fact, this, this one will be called, this, this, this particular episode will be about Isa. Yes. Uh, and and just a tribute to Isa because you are every time I meet somebody who interacted with Isa, mm. I sort of want to take time for them to tell their version of of Isa. Mm. Now, 
what I've heard you say is not only did you take it to your mom, but of course you used to give him a lot of shows mm. because you were the plug for Kenyan artists in mm. shows. Mm. Let's talk about him as an artist. Him is with work ethic. What yeah. do you so w- one of the things I loved about him was uh, the dream that he had that uh, things were going to change. And he was bubbling under. So remember, Issa did not hit until almost towards the end of his life. Mm. Yeah. Like he had done a couple of things here and there because there were other or bigger or Gopa artists yes. who were there. Uh, but I remember he had taken me to his mom. He had told me what he wants to be, aviation and stuff. And lots of conversations about like what the future will hold. And that's one of the things also we never did. We never sat down and just had a long conversation about stuff. And that, that, that's actually one of the things I regret about the industry. The industry, I'm, I'm also so busy chasing bread mm. to actually give you time to sit down and actually just take you through some mentorship. And most of the time, many of the artists that we raise get lost in the maze. Mm. You know, I just go like, listen, Tukishuka, Ukimbia Ivi, Wende Street, Tukishuka Nembele, Sao Sao. Because even me, I'm, I'm, I've, you're been, running. I've been given the same, same instructions. Mm-hmm. So even me, I'm chasing mine and you're chasing yours. Um, so back to the vibe. So we we are planning the funeral because it was a Muslim one. So I'm in South Sea. I met this young kid. Uh, he used to be in some, some is it Laser Hill? I'm some, some, um, some private school. Brookhouse. Yeah, some crazy kid just bouncing bouncing everywhere and then we went to we went baradisa and then i actually have footage of you yeah let me shock you yeah i have some very rare footage of isa yeah so i have footage of you yeah the day he passed on yeah remember that that time when the when every that day yes a lot of people went to the mom's house yes 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 so i have yes. footage of you yes awesome yes giving. because he was um he had shared a big part of his life with me and uh, we, we, we had great plans. So what happened is this. So remember, most artists were recording at Ogopa or Caliph. But especially the Ogopa artists still viewed me as their big brother, father manager. Mm. Although Ogopa had their own manager. Yep. So that's, that's why... Fakika mean. And that's why I have a story about uh, Longombas. I have a story about... Like, almost everybody in Ogopa, apart from Nameless, Everybody else has passed through my hands. But nameless kuna story ya wahu. Wahu. <laughs> so you <he> still passed. <laughs> Indirectly. Okay. Hey bro. I know I know the Shafi story in Akam, but like tell me Longombas. We've lost um Christian. Yeah, yeah. So what's your Longomba story? Wow. Same thing. Just big brother, dad. I mean, if I tell you stories, let me tell you, you cannot believe we can't even tell these stories because okay, guys it. will not believe. I mean, even with vultures and... You mentioned XYZ. XYZ with Majize. If I tell you, these guys used to live... Longombas, Majize used to live in an apartment. No, in a hostel on Juja Road. Mm. All of them inside a hostel. All three guys. So hold on, let me just answer this. Okay, we're back. So, Majize Uku have even a digs upstairs. Uh, a digs upstairs. Those guys are living in a hostel. <laughs> Not a digs. No. Mm. A hostel. No, those ones with three beds Mm-mm. in one room. Oh. Yeah. In, in Pang- on, on Juja Road. You know? I know of uh, an art, artist group. They were big. But they went through hard times and decided keeping doves. You know, for what? Mm-hmm. For food. What? I know uh, guys who've been auctioned like silly. I know guys who've gone and lived with older women. Um, they've been fungiwad, you know, because now, yeah. So you've seen this industry grow? Everything. You've I've seen, seen guys on drugs. I've seen guys change their lives. I've seen guys come with thinking they know everything and then they end up with zero. Mm. On the positive side, you've seen guys build houses. I've seen guys buy cars, you know, dress well. Now, let me tell you, when, when, when the earlier days of the industry, the only place to get clothes was at the Rock Collection, which was in Tao at 20th century. 20th century, century yeah. And guys like had a book. They had a, bo- a debt book. <laughs> because you see, there were artists who could not rewind clothes. Oh, man. So every time they'd go and just get 
clothes, clothes, you know, like proper shoes and those from those days. So for Luku, guys were going in debt. Oh, like crazy. So those of us who, who, who couldn't do Sunbeam were doing rock collection. It was like the best urban clothes shop in town. Mm. Another day, one day, I'm called by some of my mentors, my, my, my big brothers. Uh, um, yes. No, oh. Roy and uh, uh, what's his name? Hassani. So Hassani tells me, Ted, um, come and meet me at Total, uh, Nairobi West, in the night. So I go to Nairobi West, Total. Behind there, there's a place where guys used to chew Mira. And I see some two very fancy cars. So the guy there uh, passed away a couple of months ago. It's called Rama. Rama used to have many cars. Rama passed, so, passed on? Yeah, Rama passed on. So Rama is there. Rama introduces me and tells me, I trust you. I'm giving you this young kid. From today onwards, you're responsible for this kid. I asked him, what's, hey, so what's your name? Tell me, uh, my name is Jackson McKinney, but you can call me CMB Prezo. And that starts my relationship with Prezo. I listen to his song, he plays for me. The first song that he has, I go like, whoa, this is amazing. This song will be a hit. Second song, um, I took him for his first show in Nakuru mm. at Dimples. And that just blew him out of the water and made him to be the next biggest thing that ever happened. That's crazy, because even when Prezo was, first of all, I'm shocked, I didn't know Rama had passed on. Uh, secondly, Prezo even definitely mentions that. Without you, you definitely gave him a leg up. Here's yeah. even a clip of that. Yeah. So once we did the video, I had a product on the table that I could sell. So I said, okay, what's the way forward now? So I thought about it, you know, um, Big Ted was doing promotions you know like corporate promotions and what have you so they do these road shows mm -hmm. so i had a meeting my my mom big ted and myself dude j just let me just stop you right there mm. your mom yeah like your mom yeah my mom was seated we had we had a lunch meeting and all this was surreal for me you know and my mom told big ted she's like um listen my son you're both my sons you know and your brother here is very passionate about music so i want you to help him by all means necessary for him to actually achieve this dream of his so big ted and my mom you know they had this connection from the word go you know mm -hmm. big ted was like sour mama you know um me he'll be under my watch you know um and I'll make sure I do whatever possible in my power to walk with him through this journey. So the first show that Big Ted gave me was in um, Carnival. It was um, Mr. and Miss. It was, it was one of these beauty pageants, mm -hmm. you know. And at that time, I only had um, Let's Get Down, which I hadn't released yet. Mm -hmm. I had um, Malaika Mama, of mm -hmm. which now was the song that I was writing with at that time. Mm -hmm. But do you know, I was so nervous, you know. I had a whole squad, I had an entourage, you know, from bodyguards to Sidri, you name it, you know. But then when it was time for me to go on stage, I couldn't control my hands. You know, you could clearly see my hand was just shaking. Mm. And even my voice, you could yeah. feel, you know, like I was still rough around the edges. So I sang the Malaika Mama song with Wire, just that one song. And then now we put out the Let's Get Down video. Now that was the product that, you know, Big Ted would go and sell to the corporates and for me to end up in these road shows. Mm -hmm. Now, I was fortunate enough because when it came to these road shows, you know, like I had everything that I needed. Yeah. So even other artists would be traveling with the artist van. Mm -hmm. But me and my team would go in a your own convoy cars. of our own cars, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I remember very well when we went for this show in Nakuru. 
let's go back to the Isa conversation into the Shafi. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we finish uh, the burial. We we announced there, yeah, guys, we're going to hang out because the hangout for cool guys on this side of Tao used to be mo- uh, mobile. Mobile mat. That's yeah. why guys used to go and drink and chill. Wrong road. <clears throat> Wrong road. Oh, no, sorry, Mombasa road. Mombasa road, yeah. Bellevue. So, Ukoyoka, yeah, Bellevue. Yeah, yeah. so we go there. And as we're there, so there's this robunctious lot of young kids from South Sea making noise everywhere. And then there were many... That place was like, I think it gets like a G. Now, it's the place I used to buy stuff every day when mm. I'm going home. Mm. So I'm trying to control the crowds. Man, guys have gone in and started stealing alcohol. What? We see guys in the shop like 30. Mm. So the attendance, zero. They can't see anything. So guys are buying things and everything. So during that whole mess, I meet a young guy. So I tell the guy, help me, Bana. You help me stop guys from the door. Me, I stop guys on the other side. That was Shafi Wero. So that side, my whole life uh, relationship with Shafi. And then by that time, because I was doing a lot of shows, I brought Mr. Nice to Kenya. Fagilia, Fagilia, Bongo. Tell guys how big that song was. Oh the biggest Kenyan song. Mr. <laughs> nice song. Before was, Diamond. Was Before Diamond, we had was Mr. Nice. was bigger than Diamond. It just that uh, Kizungu had escaped him a bit. <laughs> when I remember when we went to sign contra- we were signing autographs. And there was a club called Sikiliza in Village Market. Village Market, yep. A cool club. So we were there signing, signing, and then I, I saw what he had signed. It was uh, The concert was on the, that day was on the first. Uh, but he had written one with a TH. Uh, so it was like one. One. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so. So that's how you met Shafi. TID, did you ever connect? Of course. Hey, bro. I can throw names Listen, in the whole night I, with you. Eh? <laughs> let me tell you. I, I'm the first promoter to bring Diamond to Kenya. Platinums. Yes, and because you're my friend, I'll give you the footage. You can play for these guys they see. So the footage is here? I have the footage. Sir, say footage, enter now. Yes. <laughs> right now. Check this out.